the first encounter of Abraham when he heard God. Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 to 5. The Lord said to Abraham, Leave your country, your people, and your father's household, and go to the land I will show you. Okay? I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you and will make your name great. And you will be what? A blessing. Imagine that. Next verse. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. Okay? And uh, all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. Wow, can you imagine? So Abraham left. As the Lord told him, Lot went with him. Abraham was 75 years old, okay, when he set out from Haran. Next verse, he took his wife Sarah, or Sarai, nephew Lot, all the possessions they had accumulated in Haran, and they set out for the land of Canaan, and they arrived in Canaan. Para maintindihan natin the context of how and when Abraham got this call from God, okay, to you know, to leave his country and all of this. Kailangan maintindihan natin, saan ba galing? Ano ba yung background? Ano ba yung family background ni Abraham? Saan ba siya galing? And ano yung context kung kailan niya narinig yung bosses ni Lord calling him out? Now, we understand that uh, from the text, si Abraham was living in Ur in Chalde, Sumeria. Okay, in Sumeria, a very wealthy, prosperous, and advanced city. So, an advanced yan in terms of there's learning, learning uh, uh, sites there, yung places of education, and all of these things. Very advanced. In other words, in today's uh, first world nation yan. Abraham was living in a first world nation. Maybe a place like UK, US, uh, one of the European nations, maybe Japan or Singapore or whatever. It's a first world nation. They were very wealthy. The city was wealthy, but Abraham and his family were very wealthy. Now, here, in this land of Ur, Ur, uh, they had, aside from being prosperous, they were known to be worshipping, okay? They were worship sila ng many, many gods, many, many idols. And the chief god, or one of the gods the, that they really worship is the moon god. A moon god named Nana, or sometimes it's called Sin. They are temples of Sin. Okay, so that's the God they serve. Okay, how they, they, they serve a God called Sin or Nana. But uh, so that's the picture of uh, Abraham. Uh, so makikita natin, when God was calling Abraham, he, his family, he was in a place of prosperity. Mayaman sila, di ba? He took all the possessions, sabi, then accumulate nila, and then they went out. So mayaman sila, Abraham, yung pamilya niya. He, it was not like, you know, rags to riches and all of that. Mayaman na sila. So, he did not need more prosperity. When God was calling him to a place of blessing, kasi tayo inisip natin blessing, ay, ayaman ka, right? But it was not that. Mayaman na sila. So, it was a different kind of blessing. Of course, kasama na yun, but it's a different kind of blessing that God was offering Abraham. Abraham was not seeking God. Abraham was probably content. Nababuhay lang siya, may mayaman sila, place of, ba? Okay lang. And out of that, suddenly a voice spoke and said, Abraham! He was beginning to call in that place. And suddenly, the life of Abraham turned upside down. <laughs> Sometimes, when, or many times, when God calls us, bumabalik tayo yung buhay natin. Ultimately, for the good. Right? For the good and for His glory. But we will see here, he was not, Abraham was not a worshiper. He was not seeking God. It was God who sought Abraham. And that's what we need to learn first about faith. Faith begins with God, not us. Faith is initiated by God. Apart from God initiating this call, Abraham would have lived in that place of darkness. Yes, comfortable, mayaman, but ultimately, no purpose in life. Dispersed, confused. That's the state of humanity during that time. 
But God intervened, just like He did to you and me. If you're a believer, you know that in the midst of your mess, in the midst of what you're going through, God intervened and initiated that faith with you. It's not you initiating a faith with God. Why? What was God after anyway? Mayaman na si Abraham. Ano ba yung gusto ni Abraham? Because God was after not just, oh, Abraham, mayaman ka, papayamanin pa kita. There was something else that God was after. And I want us to see this big picture the, as we go through this series. That the blessing and the faith of Abraham was not just for himself, but God was after. Yes, creation was good, but because of sin, it went haywire, di ba? Nawarak. De- de- deteriorating. Hanggang Genesis 9, di ba? The flood. Right? And then Tower of Babel, ganun pa rin. So God was in the process he spoke in creation, but he, sp- he called again a family to recreate, to repopulate, to call a sp- community of faith, a community of faith and a family uh, of faith that will uh, propagate and be a blessing to the earth. That was it all about. God called you not just for you to be okay, ma-ayos lahat ng problema mo, but there's something else. I want you to put that at the back of your mind as we go through this preaching and this series. Amen? So, the call to them, he heard this voice calling him Abraham. Abraham. And when he heard this voice, it was a call to a relationship with him first. Faith is first and foremost a relationship with God. All throughout the series, makikita niyo yan. Did not say that Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness and he was called God's friend. That's what James says. So faith is also a relational term. When you believe and trust God, you become a friend of God. Faith is relational. He calls us. The first calling is to a relationship with Him. Not to do something, but He calls us to Himself. Because out of the being comes the doing, right? We're first human beings before you are do- human doings, right? I mean, you heard that. <laughs> he calls us that faith is a call to God Himself. And if we are to walk with God in faith, if we are to journey this life of faith in, uh, to God in Christ, then we need to heed. Then we need to learn from how God called Abraham because God called Abraham. And there were three aspects of this call that we need to understand and we will see. He called Abraham to himself and out of something. Okay, so what is this calling, this aspects of the call that we will see from Abraham? First, it was a call to leave. A call to leave. Sabihin mo sa katabi mo, to leave. Leave behind. Iwanan mo. To be separate. To go out. Right? Sabi niya in verse 1, Leave your country, your people, and your father's household. This was a time when you know, alam na natin, this was Abraham's very first encounter. No one heard the voice of God for so long until God spoke to Abraham. It's a genuine encounter. And so Abraham, when he heard this, when God revealed himself, Abraham had to trust this voice. Abraham had to trust this God and follow and obey him. And we know that our faith grows the more we know God. But it was progressive. Makita natin, the weeks that follow, progressive yon. Abraham would know different, iba-ibang aspects si Lord. Because God is infinite. There's so many things we can learn from God. In fact, do you know that the names of God in the Bible, there's so many names of God in the Bible, but it reflects who God is. It reflects how someone knew something different about God, about God our healer, God our provider, God being there, 
God our shield, God our reward. There's so many things. And let me tell you, because the name of, of God reflect an encounter with God. An encounter. Wow. wow. Ganito pala si Lord. That's why later on you will learn the different names of God representing the different encounters of different men of faith. Abraham found, uh, discovered many names of God in this series, you know. But it requires that. It requires for us to know Him. The call to God is a call to leave behind certain things. Whenever God calls us to Himself, we are to leave behind because God calls us who we are as warts and all, right? God's love calls us and accepts us as who we are. But let me tell you, God's love and calling does not leave us the way we are. We will be transformed the more we walk with Him. But it requires for us to leave certain things behind. What did God call Abraham to leave? Three things, diba? Can you put out the scripture again? First, sabi niya, leave your country. Mag-OFW ka na. No, 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 that's what... <laughs> but why? I mean, naintindihan natin, Right? His country, I mean, very obvious. It was a place of compromise. Well, it's just a place of comfort also. <laughs> it was a place of comfort. Well, place of compromise, a place of sin. Kita natin, right? Yes, it was, it was very prosperous, advanced, lahat nandoon ng uh, creature comforts. I mean, that, there's so many reasons why people go to another nation. And I'm not saying don't go to another nation. Right? But God called him out of that because there's something that God was instilling in Abraham. Because that place, that place of com uh, compromise, that place of sin, let me tell you, there may be areas where you are. As I said, God called you where you are, but God Calling you out of that does not leave you the way you are. He wants to change and transform you. That means forsaking that lifestyle of sin. Forsaking that relationship that's causing, forsaking things that's causing you to compromise. If you are to grow in your faith with God, you need to leave things behind. Things that will weigh you down. Sin weighs you down. Compromise weighs you down. You need to leave that behind. Leave your country. Leave your people, says. A people. Again, that place, that, that uh, family, uh, that clan, kindred, that's what it says in other translations, it was a place of comfort and safety and security. Right? Nandun yung pamilya, nandun yung kaibigan, right? Everyone was there. Everything was familiar. Alam niya, Una, kanyang dito sa church, alam niyo kung saan yung seating arrangement niyo. Dito kayo nakaupo, nakareserve na sa inyo yan. No, 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 we don't do that. But you feel like dito, ito yung tao, ito yung katabi ko, or nandun sa, uh, parang familiar na kayo. And somehow, parang pag may nagbago, wow, parang uh, people are not used to changes now. That's called comfort zone and familiarity. People sometimes are in bondage to the familiar. The tyranny of the familiar. God is taking him away from that place of comfort. The place of security. Why? Because gusto ni Lord, siya ang security natin. Siya ang place of comfort natin. Siya ang place of person of dependence. Hindi tao, hindi yung clan. I mean, I'm not saying na, oh, iwan nyo na na pamilya. Kalimutan nyo na yung pamilya. No, no, no. I'm saying that in the midst of that, the leaving behind of Abraham was something in his heart. First, before it was something external. When God calls you out of certain things, it's first in your heart. I'm not saying, iwan niyo na yung pamilya, no. But it's something that God does. I want you to be clear on that. A place of comfort and security may mess up. That's why sometimes you will not grow in your relationship with God kung puro familiar and comfort nyo lang yung isipin nyo. 
have to hear really the voice of God. God is calling you to do some things that are not comfortable. When you go out of you, your way to help someone, to pray for someone, to engage and evangelize someone, right? It's not comfortable. But sometimes, paano Lord kung ipag-pray ko to para hindi ma-heal or paano kung i-reject niya ako? Kanina ang boses yun? Sa'yo, sa'yo yun. <laughs> ano ba yung boses ni Lord? <laughs> Because it's not about us. God was, I mean, I'm telling you, nakaka-relate ako, ganun rin ako. Lord, paano kung pag-pray ko to hindi ma-heal or may binigay sa Lord na, okay, share about this and hindi tama yung, let's say, yung word of knowledge or something. There's always that. So, laging may ganun. So, masanin na tayo. But at the same time, if we want to grow, we need to get out of our comfort zone. As simple as that. But not only did God call Abraham to leave, it was also a call to cleave. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, a call to cleave. Kung hindi man yan, cleave, it means to hold on, to perse- persevere, okay? to hang on tight, okay? to s- stay strongly connected to. God was calling him out of those places and God was calling Abraham to strongly be connected to God. Because dati, ang source, of, ang source ni Abraham was his family, was that place. But a full dependence of God means, tanggalin mo yun and then say, Abraham, alam ko mayaman ka. I want you to leave that behind. <laughs> you will forsake all of these things. That's the same call that Jesus gave us, right? If you want to follow me, Forsake all these things, carry your cross, and follow me. It's the same thing. What's called to cleave means you are now my source, Lord. Hindi, wala, na ako sa, wala na ako sa earth. Kung papayamanin mo ako, it's going to be through you. Not through someone else, not through our old sources, old connections. It's going to be through you and through you alone. God told him, go to the land, I will show you. Okay, Lord. I've heard your calls, but sa papunta? And God said, you'll see later on. <laughs> now, he was ca- being called away from that. And many times, God wants to strip you from all these things that we rely on. But in that place of uncertainty, quote-unquote, <laughs> seeming uncertainty, and sometimes parang, Lord, maganda tong trabaho na to eh, bakit dito? Or, Maganda tong where am I uh, ngayon? Ba't mo kinakall dito? It's a call to a deeper dependency on Him. Because that the place of ultimate security and safety is found in God alone. In that place of full trust in God. The safest place to be in is in the center of God's will. Abraham did not know where he was going. A place of uncertainty. Sort of, when you look at it in the outward. But let me read the account of Hebrews, how Hebrews portrays Abraham's faith at this. It says, When called to go to a place he would later receive as inheritance, he obeyed and went. Diba yun yung offering scripture natin? But let me expound that. Though he did not know where he was going, by faith he made his home and promised like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents as did Isaac and Jacob who were heirs with him of the same promise. Verse 10, for he was looking forward to the city with foundations as architect and builder is God. Let me tell you, he did not know where he was going. Right? But he knew what he was looking for. And he knew whom he was being sent for. He knew who was sending him and leading him. Remember, the context of this is the Babel. Right? Everything's about us. Everything's about me. I'm going to make myself, my name great. But when we talk about references being directed, yung journey natin, GPS, dito tayo, this is where we're supposed to go, and someone is directing us. That's why I call GPS ni Abraham. May, G- may GPS na si Abraham. God's positioning system. He was guiding him. Abraham, dito ka. You don't know where you're going? 
I know exactly where you're supposed to be. Do you know where you're supposed to be right now? Do you know where God is calling you today? Are you there? Or are you just, ikaw yung fixed reference point. Ah, gusto ko ganito ako. At this age, ganito, ganito. Ito yung mga plano ko sa buhay ko. Ito yung mga plano ng parents ko. Ito yung plano, whatever, whoever that plan is. Or is God directing your plans and your directions? Abraham did not know where he was going, but he knew he was looking for a city, not the Tower of Babel that man was making, but a city built by God. But it's called to cling on to Him, to cleave to Him and to Him alone. Amen? Who are you following today? Your own voice, your own plans, or God's plans. A call to leave, a call to cleave, and finally a call to believe. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, a call to believe. And of course, we know Abraham as a man of faith. Alam naman natin lahat, a call to believe. And this is the promise that all of us wants in Genesis 12. Makita natin ito context. I will make you into a great nation. If you notice, the five I wills of God. In the Tower of Babel, Sila yon. I, we will make our name great. We will be those that, you know, people will go to us. We will be famous. We will be all of this. We will be influential. But this, Abraham said, if you leave those things behind, I myself will do this for you. If you cleave to me, I will do this. I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great. I will bless those who bless you. I will curse those who curse you. God wants to do this for you. You don't have to do this for yourself. What you need to do is grow in your relationship with God as you walk with Him. Leave those things behind. Cling only to Him and believe His promises for you. The blessings, which summarize this five I wills, is the blessing of significance, of security, of succession. That's what we all want. Every person wants that. Right? Lahat tayo gusto natin may ganun. But it's only God who can assure that for us. Listen. That's why faith is so critical. And faith is based on three things. Faith is based on three things. It's based first on knowledge. We need to know who God is. It's based on knowledge. It's based on belief. And it's based on trust. Knowledge means we need to know God more. You need to know the scriptures. That's why we tell you, read your Bible. You pray. You get to know this God who called you. Get to know Jesus Christ. You need, get, get to know His Word. Binigay niya na His Word, the Bible, so that we can know Him. So that we can know His will. Knowledge is important. You cannot serve and worship and walk with God that you do not know. Abraham knew that this God is a God who calls, and a God who promises, and a God who keeps His promises. And later on, he would knew, know many more things about God. Knowledge is the base. But it's not enough. We need to believe what He says. Many people know the Bible. You can memorize the Bible without believing the Bible, right? <laughs> That's why we need to believe. The ascent is part of it. Knowledge. Knowing it, believing the promises of God. Pero kulang pa rin yun. You know why? Because the Bible says even the demons believe in God. They know the Bible. In fact, the devils can even quote the Bible better than you. They know and they believe and they shudder because the third aspect of faith is trust. And they don't trust. They know that Jesus is Lord, but they don't trust Him as their personal Lord. It's just a matter of fact but on a matter of relationship. Knowledge, belief, and trust is critical. And we will learn this from the life of Abraham. Trust, that's why, again, as I said, faith is a relational word. But at this point, it's also a matter where we understand that the bigger 
aspect of the blessing of Abraham. It's not just for himself, but he calls to be a blessing. He calls Abraham, you will be a great nation. What's a great nation? What's a nation anyway? A nation is an extended family for many generations. Right? A nation. That's why the genealogy of Israel is there in the Bible. It's boring, but it's there to show you that a great nation starts with one man. A family over and over, generation after generation. That's why we believe in the next generation. Discipling a generation, a generation that follows God, a generation that hears the voice of God. But it's not just for us. It's not just for Israel. Now, okay, I've blessed Israel. It's for the world. It says, you will be a blessing to many nations. And he did not say, you will be a blessing to many nations. Who want to follow me? Who or who? You will be a blessing, unqualified, to all the nations of the earth. So we will go there to be a blessing. That's why I believe this nation is called to be a missionary because God wants us to share. God wants you to share your faith. God wants you to engage those. Amen? And as, begin, as I close regarding that, let me share that hearing the voice is so critical. Hearing God's call. When you hear God's call out of our comfort zone, we don't know what it does. I mean, it's not just for us. It's for others as well. You may be in a journey of faith already with God, but there are others who need to be in that journey. What we learn from Abraham what you leave behind for God today will determine what God will leave behind for you tomorrow. Abraham had to leave behind all these things, but God left for him a great name, right? A great blessing and a great nation. Success, succession, significance, and security is what God left for Abraham. Abraham.